so this is a workshop um, which starts at really basics and explains how PCA is calculated and then how we can build on that to do other types of matrix factorization. Um, and this is a workshop that I'll be presenting with um, Lauren Shu, who presented the Corral package um, yesterday. Um, and if we have time and if there's interest, I can talk about um, multi-omics gene set analysis, which is a matrix factorization approach for multiple data sets um, and layering on gene set information onto that. To run this workshop, um, the easiest approach is literally to click on this workshop.bioccancerdatasites.r and I'll show you how to do that in one second. Um, alternatively, if you don't want to run the code um, and you just want to follow along with the vignette, you can click on the website. Okay, and this is just the vignettes um, in HTML format. If you have R 4.0, or if you have the development version of R, feel free to download the MPCA workshop. The main reason why we're using the cloud version is because we expect that many people may not have the most recent version of R installed, and the R cloud version has everything there that you need. You won't get caught with installed packages not available. Um, but if you just want to try and run this, or if you want to run just the Corral package later on, you feel free to also install. Finally, um, probably the more complicated approach, but it is available if you want, is a Docker image. And in you Docker pull, which means you download, you Docker run, and that will start up a Docker instance, which is just a process on your machine. After which time you open up your browser, you type in localhost 8787 because that is where um, it's being broadcast to. It's being broadcast to 8787. That's the port. So if you open up a browser on that port, you should see the R Cloud instance, which is the exact same as what is running on workshop.bioc.datasize.org. Okay, that would bring down a package that basically install uh, that runs that on your machine, but doesn't actually install any software. If you run Docker, you do need to remember to Docker stop the containers as well afterwards. Okay, I am just going to start that up. Select the PCA one. So the idea behind any dimension reduction is to simplify the data or to reduce the dimensions of the data. And possibly because I spend a lot of my time cleaning up after kids, I was attracted to this image. And the idea here is that given a matrix or a large set of data, we can find variant or informative patterns in that data. And that could be the size of the objects. It could be in, um, L um, information such as the color, the function or potentially other hidden in information in the data, but that's highly variant in the data. It's a large source of information and therefore it's something that we can find in the data. And all of these um, terms are actually derivatives are related to dimension reduction or matrix factorization, ordination, factor analysis, eigen analysis, latent variable analysis, matrix factorization, principal component analysis, wavelet analysis, wavelet decomposition, uh, spectral analysis, non-negative matrix factorization, all of these are related. And the thing that's really important to learn is basically SVD. Now in a recent analysis, um, there was 18 different um, methods compared, and this is Sun et al, the University of Michigan, and it was published in Genome Biology. Um, a lot of the newer methods didn't actually outperform these old methods. PCA was first described by Pearson in 1904, 1901, 1904, 1901. Factor analysis was described by, by Pearson, Spearman in 1904. So these are really, really, really old methods. And indeed, the, um, as the data set grows, these actually become more similar to each other. Um, 
so, but these methods are the basis of most modern genomic data analysis and particularly single cell, whether we're doing cell clustering, neighborhood analysis or trajectory inference. The first step in all of these analyses is actually some dimension reduction. Even if you're visualizing with TISNI or with UMAP, frequently the first step is a dimension reduction and frequently that's PCA. What is it? Well, the idea behind a matrix factorization or dimension reduction, and I keep saying these words interchangeably on purpose, um, is to find the smallest uh, number of linear vectors that explain most of the variance in the data. And by and large, the way that this is done is via SVD. So it's important that we get a concept of what this is. So singular value decomposition or SVD is a matrix operation that given a matrix, it produces three matrices. And these are special matrices with really nice properties. Okay, so U and V are called singular uh, matrices, the left and the right singular values. And then D is a diagonal matrix of singular values. This matrix is all zeros except for the diagonal. So essentially it's a vector. And that vector tells you how important are the, each of the different eigenvalues or singular values that were found were. And these are ranked such that the first is the largest, the next is the next largest and so forth. And these eigenvalues correspond to the first column here or the first row here, this matrix is transposed. Okay, and K here is the rank of the matrix. That means the number of components that you're finding. Um, so in this case here, we've got four, the rank is four. You will see that this matrix is a four by four, it's a K by K matrix. And this matrix here is four by P. The original matrix is N by P, this is N by K, this is N by P. Um, and again, these vectors are ranked such that the first represents the most information and so forth. And equally, the vectors in this matrix are also ranked. Both U and V are orthogonal matrices. And orthogonal matrices have a very, very nice properties that make them very, very functional. When you multiply the transpose of the matrix by the matrix, you get the identity. And I know for some people, this is like really basic. And for other people, they're going, oh, don't bring me back to like, you know, high school math. Um, so the identity matrix is a matrix in which all of the values are zeros and the diagonals are one. So essentially it's a matrix of just ones in the diagonal. Okay, and you, V and U are both orthogonal matrices. Now within an orthogonal matrix, if you actually take any pair of columns and take the dot product between those, you get zero. And the squared elements sum to one. So these are really nice properties. And also if you take the sum of the squares of the matrix, you actually get the sum of the squares of the eigenvalues. So there's some really, really nice properties here that allow us then to use this for some very um, nice approaches. There's two main, there's probably more than two, but there's definitely two approaches that people use for explaining SVD. One is this matrix-based approach and the other is a geometric approach. And I will give that, um, some um, references if you want in order to explain, you may find one easier than the other. But because the sum of the squares of the columns is one and you're dealing in this unit circle space, you can actually do a geometric approach where you're looking here, if you can remember Pythagoras theorem in, in your trigonometry, and you've got your cosine and sine and you've got all of your angles. You can actually, 
um, represent SVD in this space as well. And there's a whole school of um, decomposition analysis, which based, is based on the geometric interpretation of SVD and the geometric interpretation of matrix factorization. And that's very much the French school. Okay. So we're going to stop at this point and we're going to go to the vignette and I want you to actually test this. Don't take my word for it. Please actually do this. And I'm going to introduce you to a really, really simple data set, um, which has got five variables, um, or you can create um, an R norm. Uh, this is a random normal, um, 100 by 50, so we're taking 5,000 variables here, we're creating 50 columns. So we can just make a matrix and you can use this, or you can use the wine data set. And you're going to run SVD, and then you're going to test these properties here yourself. I'm not going to give you the code, and when people have it worked out, I want you to indicate on the poll, so we'll put down a little thing on the poll, completed SVD, U transpose, um, U, V transpose V, and I want you to like hit like, and that tells us that like there's a lot of people that have had, that actually have the solution. Okay, so let's go to the website. I have way too many things open here. Okay, so I ran the, um, I just clicked on that link and I started up the browser. Alternatively, if you want to go to the package down site or if you want to install the package, those are other approaches. Um, there's a couple of different ways to open up the vignettes and to get the code and to get the HTML rendering of it. Um, I, you can either browse the vignettes if you want or you can just find the package. And I'm just going to go down to PCA workshop here. Click on it. Um, and let me just make this a little bigger so you can see it. Okay. And at this point in time, there's, this has literally just got a, some couple of vignettes in it. There's actually three different, um, sorry, there's four vignettes in this. So there's one called introduction, there's one called PCA, there's one called COA, which is correspondence analysis, and there's another which is called single cell RNA seq example. Okay, we're really only going to use intro, and we're going to use the single cell RNA seq example. The other two are very much for reference, but I will mention them briefly. So if you click on the intro one here. Okay, I just clicked on the pop out, this little button here. So this example here, I'm loading a couple of packages. The data set that I'm actually loading is in the package ADE4, or Adia Catch, it's actually a French package. And we're going to look at wine tasting in Bordeaux. Um, and so you will load that by, looking at, by loading data Bordeaux. And this is a really simple data set where um, different table wines were tasted by experts. I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on wine because you know we need to take tangents. So um, in France, um, Grand Cru is like the, um, mo has the most legal restrictions on how it's produced and it's a higher value. Whereas the table wine at the bottom here has the least restrictions and it's the lowest value, so it's the cheapest. And then there's an ordering here basically from, you know, the table wine, the regional wine up to the different crews, which are basically the, the, um, the vineyard ones. So um, we can have a look at this data. Um, I don't even need to do this. You just load in the libraries. You can also, in the packages here, or so in the help, if you want to open up the source or the R code, that's also really useful. 
okay because with if you open up the r code you will literally just have the actual segments of code to click okay i'll just show you what this data set looks like Where is it? Yeah, there. Okay, so this is basically judges, rated wines is excellent, good, mediocre, or boring. Okay, and um, this here is just looking at the scores of the different wines from good to bad. Okay. This part of the vignette here is absolutely not something to do. This is actually, um, because it was wine, I thought it might be nice to look at um, pomology um, theme with GG Plot. Pomology is um, the cultivation of fruits and it's those like really pretty pictures of, of um, these kind of pictures here of grapes. And so there's actually a GG pomology data set which allows you to actually generate bar plots that look like they're on aged paper with old script. Okay, so um, I'm going to not talk anymore. You can work through the vignette and hit on the poll when you actually um, complete the task of checking the matrix, the, the, the singular values are actually orthogonal. So we have a question in the polls. Um, what is FA, the first value in the initial graph? FA. Oh, that was from the Sun at all results. Um, FA was for factor analysis. Oh, okay, yes, factor analysis. That, oh, oh, okay, yeah. So the Sun et al paper compared 18 matrix factorization methods and FA is factor analysis and PCA is, is principal component analysis. And uh, factor analysis was originally described by Pearson in 1904. And PCA was originally described by Spearman, Pe Pearson, sorry, PCA is Pearson 1901, factor analysis is Spearman 1904. So they're both actually, um, pretty old and if you actually listen to um some historians they'll they'll even try and bring that further back to the 1800s uh, we have another question in the poll i'm not sure if you want to address this now or later but um recommended Lauren, reading you, you can address these too you know if you want yeah i know <laughs> but um okay so the question is recommended reading for beginners wanting to learn linear algebra uh, many biologists rarely encounter this type of mathematics in their undergraduate degree have we already missed the boat? No. My favorite, favorite book is Le Grand and Le Grand. I will put that up at the end of the slides. Um, it is meant for ecologists, which means it's very accessible to biologists. And for, it tries to access every type of learning because it will introduce the theory it will introduce the mathematical notation and then it will take a really simple matrix and it will actually multiply it out and you have something you can calculate with that's only got like five numbers on it and you can actually do the, the multiplication and calculate it out so it does every single step the whole way through and it has beautiful tables in it that describe what's the difference between one method and another method and what are the problems with one versus the other. It's actually a really, really nice book um, for this. The other book that's absolutely fabulous, um, Le Grand Le Grand doesn't have any R code, um, but it just explains that the theory behind it all um, is um, Susan Holmes and Wolfgang Huber's Modern Statistics book um, for biologists. That is a fabulous book and um, that's, um, oh, green screen problems. <laughs> I can't see the book. It's like doing a virtual background thing. <laughs> I'll have to, I was going to show the book. I can't. It's a green book and it's not showing up. Um, 
the so Susan Holmes and Wolfgang Huber's book and there is actually an open source version of that book and for every single example in that book they have the R code um, and they do a really fabulous job as well so I think um, both of those are great sources to start with um, and I'll also put up um, there's a video series from the University of Washington um, which is really good as well. Any other questions on how are we doing with the, uh, where people are? We have a question about um, where's the link to the vignette. Link to the vignette is in the chat. Um, and then we also have an, another question clarifying what does it mean by the column sum of squares in the task? So to, um, to sum up the squares of all of the elements per column. This is basically verifying these two statements here, that the inner product or the dot product is of the pairs, actually we're not doing this one, that the pairs of the columns U or V equals zero. I haven't actually asked you to do that one. I've asked you to do the transpose of U by U and the transpose of V by V and to, to verify that that's orthogonal. And then the second one here is the squared elements of the columns of U or V sum to one. So those are two important properties of orthogonal matrices. Okay, um, we have another question about, uh, would it be possible to share the slides? Yes, the slides will be shared afterwards. And then where should I communicate that the exercise is finished? Um, can we have everybody upvote the where should I communicate that the exercise is finished poll question if you're done? Yeah, just tick and tick. Yeah, just just do just vote on that one. Vote on and then, oh, we have a question about what does scale do? Um, I'm, maybe we can hold off on that because I think we're going to take a closer look at that in a minute. Yeah, we're going to get into that in a lot more detail. Okay, so thirteen folks have said they are um, done with the exercise. Does anyone want to share their screen? I want to try and make this interactive. <laughs> it gets tough watching a lot of uh, workshops. I can give it a go if you guys want. Yeah. So I basically just went through the vignette, um, ran the scale function to scale all the values in, um, in the Bordeaux data frame to be in the same scale, I guess. Uh, just subtract the mean and divide by the uh, standard deviation or something like that. Uh, and then um, I tried to multiply, uh, where is that function? Yeah, it's, uh, sorry, it's a little all over the place. Uh, but yeah, so I tried to multiply everything to reproduce the scaled Bordeaux matrix. And uh, here's the result. Yay! And I also tried to multiply the transformed V times the uh, the regular matrix V. Uh, this is this stands for the dot product in R, and like I get ones across the diagonal, and I did the same thing the other way around too. Yeah, that's pretty much all I did. But I, that's the exact same as I did. I didn't do as integer. I just did round on it because it keeps it keeps the um, matrix shape. Right. Okay. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so I'll stop speaking. So PCA and pretty much most matrix factorization methods can be computed by, multi, by many different ways, linear regression, eigen analysis, SVD, latent factor analysis. But the most common approach used in almost all like modern matrix factorization is SVD. Um, and this is what's used in all of the single cell and that data analysis. When you're talking about these three matrices, it, when computed using any of these approaches, the actual um, matrices and the columns of those matrices are called different names. And that can be really confusing to the beginner. The singular vectors can now be called the principal components, the principal axes, the latent vectors, the eigenvectors, the eigengenes. Um, if people are doing face recognition, sometimes the eigenfaces. Um, and 
just be aware that there's a lot of terminology there, but at the end of the day, you're looking at three matrices, one which represents the rows, one which represents the columns, and one which is a diagonal matrix. That diagonal matrix will provide you with the eigenvalues, which are ranked from the largest to smallest. And you can look at those in a little bar plot or a little line plot like this to determine how much information was captured in each of those components. And the Kaiser rule is pretty much just the elbow rule, but I'll tell you a couple of better ways to select components later on. So what is PCA then? Well, PCA is just an SVD, a singular value decomposition. So this is this approach where you take a matrix and you decompose it to three matrices, which represent uncorrelated um, vectors, which represent the variance in the data. But there's two forms of PCA. There's PCA of the covariance matrix and PCA of the correlation matrix. PCA of the co covariance matrix is simply that you center each column and then you do SVD. PCA of the correlation matrix is you z-score each column. So you subtract for each column, you subtract its mean, and you divide by a scaling factor, typically the standard deviation. Okay, so these pre-processing steps that you may take um, sort of when you're standardizing or normalizing the data are all things that will change the outcome for better or for worse. So it's important to consider what are the actual pre-processing steps that you're applying to the data and how they impact the exploratory data analysis that you do down, downstream. And most of these approaches that you do, whether you're doing sailing or scaling or centering, standardizing or transforming the data, for example, log transforming the data, you're trying to um, reduce the heterostochasticity or basically make it look a little bit more normally distributed. Um, we reviewed this in a recent um, review, um, and I'll give you the, the, um, the information on that later on. So as I mentioned, there was two different um, PCA approaches. Um, Correlation-based PCA, which is basically PCA of the centered and scaled data, is by far the most common approach. However, we recognize that in the Sun et al. paper, they actually did covariance-based PCA. And how do I know that? So covariance PCA is PCA of the centered data. And when I looked at the actual code on GitHub, that was very kindly provided by the author, hence the Bernie points here. I noticed that they actually ran pre-comp here, which actually with center equals true, scale equals false. Okay, so these um, parameters here change the type of PCA that you're using. And this is actually something that's very important. So, what I would like you to do is to go back to the Wine et al. data set and do the PCA. So basically do scale equals true, um, center equals true, scale equals true, or just center equals true, scale equals false, and then do an SVD. And that is doing a correlation or co um, a covariance or correlation based PCA. And when you have that done, just upweight. Lauren, is there something in the poll for them to upweight? I will add something in a second. Is there questions? Yeah, we have one question about uh, SD is a numeric vector. Shouldn't it be a diagonal matrix as mentioned in the vignette? That's a very, very good point. Yes. So, um, D can be represented as a diagonal vector because it is literally just, it's only filled in on the diagonal, the rest of it is zero. Um, but in um, SVD, it returns actually a vector, it doesn't return a matrix. If you wanted to generate the matrix, you actually run this function DIAG. 
and that will actually um, let me just do this here um, and I will show you what it looks like so if you run SVD here on the Bordeaux data set you have the singular values the U matrix and the V matrix here okay the original Bordeaux data set was four um, scores and five wines so the V matrix here is representing excellent, good, mediocre, boring. And these are the scores on principal component one, two, three, and four, the values that you're getting. And then the U matrix here represents the Grand Cru, the basically the five table wines and the, the actual um, component scores. But D here is the actual, um, if I just do a plot, S dollar D. This here is your scree plot or the plot here of the eigenvalues. Okay. And to actually see that as a matrix, you can just do diagonal, which is what I actually did when I did that, that multiplication. So this is the, the code here, multiplying U by D by the transpose of V will actually return X. Okay, we have a question about how do we know which PCA scale equals T or F to use? Does it make a big difference? Um, so SVD is V by D by V to the transpose, and that is actually the formula for SVD. If you multiply, um, let's say S dollar V T, cap, where's cap, cap of T, and then matrix multiply S dollar V. You need to use the T function. Oh, sh do you know what? I think Instead of the math. You're completely right. <laughs> and then basically this will give you the round. This makes it just look a little bit prettier. Okay. So although this is the math approach, um, most people don't run PCA using scale and SVD. I just wanted to show that it could be done using that approach. Okay, what most people will actually do is they'll actually run precomp on the actual matrix. And what precomp will do is it actually gives you a much nicer output than SVD. And then there's a package that I quite like, which is called Explorer. There's a lot of other package. PCA Tools is also an excellent package, Explorer. And if I just, um, I'm just gonna save my, oh, sorry, output. And then I'm going to go Explorer on A. This actually generates quite a nice little interface here for exploring kind of the results of a dimension reduction plot and at least understanding it. And this also visualizes the unit circle, which we mentioned earlier. And we can play with label sizes and you can do lasso selection of variables if you want. And you can look at the, um, the individual's plot and the individual's data. And you can see here in this case that the, um, that the first component represented 56, 53% of the variance. 
and the, within the um, vignette it just explains that. Okay, we've spent quite a bit of time on basic PCA. I'm quite keen that we get on to single cell data. So let's actually just go through the slides and actually start that part of the vignette because I think that's really important. Kind of take we're not we're taking too long here so we had one more question about pca which is um how to decide what to do for the scale parameter like whether you want to do um like whether to scale or not so whether to use per comp or print comp so that's actually so the the thing of pre comp and per comp is actually described in the other vignette so um in the um So in the um, vignettes, there's actually three vignettes. So there's a PCA vignette, and that actually takes you through eigen analysis, SVD analysis, pre-comp, per-comp. Um, it does um, ADE4, and it also does factor, factor extra. So it, it, um, it actually has many, many different um, implementations of PCA, and I actually show how they're how what's the equivalent across all of the methods if you want to get the loadings if you want to get the scores if you want to do the bipod what are the functions and it explains all of those equally we have one for correspondence okay analysis. there now i'm doing my multi multi-session strategy again okay levi <laughs> 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 that was interesting Okay, um, I'm going to go through these slides. Let's open this up here. Okay, so we described this in a recent review in Frontiers in Oncology, and we went through the difference between running SVD without processing, running on the centered data, on the centered and scale data. And the things that you notice is that centering is really, really important. You can't compute the SVD if the data aren't centered. And the second thing we noticed was artifacts. And artifacts are, are really common in SVD. And they occur because there's curvilinear relationships between successive components. Um, you can get this due to saturation effects or if there's a gradient between one component and the next. So if you see these nice kind of arches like these kind of things here or these arches between pc1 and pc2 it's normally an indication that you have um, an arch effect and that is information about your data and possibly you know telling you information that you need to um, scale these data and there's very very typical to see this in a lot of genomics data okay so we are going to probably begin, or at least just, um, Lauren, do you want to run through the SC, the single cell seq data? Um, sure, can you advance to the next slide, I think? Mm -hmm. This was just explaining that there's lots of different methods and we reviewed this in Ming et al. 2016. Uh, I think one more. Okay, oh, sorry. There's many, many different SVD methods or matrix matrix decomposition methods. We have reviewed these. Um, PCA and correspondence analysis is one of these. Um, this is something that we've implemented in single set for single cell RNA-seq. Um, it's related to other methods that um, people have described. And you can run this in the Corral package and we're going to describe this. And if you run correspondence analysis rather than PCA, you get much better batch correction in um, data sets such as the SC mixology data set. So the um, remaining few minutes that we'll have, we're going to look at single cell RNA seq data. Um, and the data set we're going to look at is the Zeng mix data. Lauren, do you want to describe it? Sure. Yes. Um, so the Zeng mix data set comes from the dual clustering 2018 package, and it includes um, eight types of pre-sorted cells, um, including these uh, various immune cells, and they'll go through 10x sequencing, and then they are then mixed into these different uh, data sets for, um, for, uh, to, to be used as a benchmarking um, 
for, for like methods. Um, so ZenMix 4 EQ um, contains four of these uh, pre-sorted cell types mixed in approximately equal proportions. I um, mean, this is kind of like the easiest one where most methods um, do pretty well on this. Um, and then ZenMix 4 um, UnEQ takes four cell types in unequal proportions. So they're um, imbalanced groups or imbalanced classes. And then um, ZenMix 8 EQ takes all eight of these in approximately equal proportions. However, it is also more challenging than the first one because there are just many more classes. Um, so if everyone wants to go to the, um, the uh, PCA example SCRNA seq vignette, you can access that on the package down website or um, actually, I'm going to do screen sharing on this. Okay, so um, very briefly, it walks through performing PCA um, on the data set I just talked about. Um, so, okay, essentially these are, the, these are the package loads and then this is, so now we uh, create it with this function or we load it in from, from the uh, package with this SCE full ZegMix 4 EQ into a single cell experiment object. Um, we can use these commands to pull out the count and log count matrices respectively. Um, and then taking a quick look at the call data that are, that's available. Um, these are the things that are uh, described for each cell. We can see that phenoid ID contains the cell types, which we're going to use for plotting in a minute. Um, so, okay, the single cell experiment also contains the row data, which has um, annotations on each of the genes that are measured. Um, so as I mentioned, it has, so these are the cells that appear in this data set and these are the um, quantities of each type. And um, yeah, so this is just a bit of background on the data itself. Um, so first we're going to do PCA. Um, so there's like actually um, other packages that do um, uh, like much better approaches for selection, but for the purpose of this vignette, we wanted to keep it simple and, um, and try to not load too many things. So um, we just did a very simple sorting by variance and selecting by variance. Normally um, people do a mean variance stabilization because there is heteroscedasticity in the data, um, meaning that for uh, like genes that have higher values that they also tend to have higher variance and that the variance structure is correlated with the um, mean of the, of the attribute. But for the purpose of this, we just will do a simple um, selection process. Okay, and then um, we can then run um, per comp on both the count and the log count matrices and then plot the results. Uh, and looking at the results from doing PCA on the raw counts, we can see this um, arch effect that Aideen talked about um, illustrated really clearly where all the points are lying on the left side of the origin. And then um, it creates this kind of distinctive horseshoe shape. Um, and so this happens because in the count data, if you look at the range of the values, it is uh, the scales are, are really are really different. And so some values will be huge and some values are very small. So one way that um, has been used that is uh, not necessarily appropriate. Uh, there are some recent papers, uh, we can point to those um, after the talk that suggests uh, log transformation is not appropriate for single cell data. Um, but however, if, if you do do a log transformation on the counts or if you do um, PCA on the log counts, then um, you find that the arch effect uh, kind of is resolved a little bit and you're able to separate the clusters, although all the points are still lying on one side of the origin, which is uh, not ideal there. Um, okay, so there are a few interactive examples that um, you could work through. Um, it's pretty, self-explanatory, like what needs to be done for each of those. Um, we only have a few minutes left. So um, we also wanted to ask if folks would prefer to kind of talk through these examples and have time to look at them, or if you would prefer to hear um, more about um, matrix factorization methods and the MOGSA package. Actually, we only have about five minutes. I don't think we'll have time to actually do them, but I'll just explain um, what is in this vignette if people want to, if everyone wants to if, if anyone's interested in like looking at it afterwards. Um, so in the first one, we're just going to look at um, exploring beyond the first PC. Um, this, you can also do this in Explore, um, as Aideen showed, um, that has a nice interactive interface. But if you wanted to, you can also just change this one um, variable in this code, and then it will also enable you to explore the subsequent PCs. Um, you can do that for both of them if you're interested. And then again, we can repeat the thing that everyone just worked through of performing PCA without per comp. Um, 
There's a bit on visualizing embedding, so how to, how to call UMAP in R. I'm not gonna go through that now. Um, and then one thing that we wanted to highlight is um, thinking about other like ways to speed up PCA because the um, uh, single cell data sets are just super, very large. And if you run per comp on, a, on, on any like actual data, it will take uh, quite a while. So um, one way to speed this up is by using um, fast SVD approximation. And the implementation we're gonna show here is with Erlba. So um, it uses an iterative algorithm to compute a fast approximation. Um, so basically what it does is gonna compute the top, some top number of PCs rather than performing a full decomposition and its approximation is gonna be much faster. So there's a bit here kind of showing equivalence between these methods and demonstrating speed. Um, the difference here is not so marked, but if, you, if you're running this on your laptop, it will, you will definitely notice the, the difference between them uh, scaling pretty quickly, even if the matrices are not um, super large. Um, anyway, so we can go through this and confirm that they're giving us the same results, even though one is like substantially faster than the other one, um, as we can see here. Um, and then, okay, and then another interactive exercise in here is um, how to implement. So using what we did before and using the fact that we can use Erlba as a substitute for the SVD command to perform SVD more quickly, um, how to basically to, to write the command in, in the, for performing PCA with um, the scale and the Erlba functions. Um, and then there's a brief introduction to correspondence analysis and the corral package. Um, it's implemented in, in other places. However, those are gonna be tricky to run on any single cell data sets as they're not using, um, as they're using kind of like the, the uh, slower SVD call rather than um, Erlba. And um, there's another interactive example here if um, any, anyone's interested in exploring more data sets in this package. Um, you can do that and you can also, if you don't want to do the kind of, uh, if you don't want to do, if you don't want to bother with um, gene selection, you can also do select um, pre-filter genes from this package or data sets that are pre-filtered for for uh, genes from, from this package using the various commands. Um, yeah, so we're almost at time. Maybe if we have any questions, we can go through those. Uh, sorry, I'm actually just answering some of the earlier ones in the chat window. Okay. Uh, while Aideen does that, can I ask a question here quickly? Yeah. Uh, so uh, she mentioned that uh, SVD or some other divide technique could be used for batch correction. And I wanted to know, wouldn't that use up degrees of freedom for the downstream steps unbeknownst to us? And uh, for that reason, wouldn't it be better to include batch variables in the model explicitly? Because uh, I'm sure that in the background, uh, these, these kind of techniques, dimensionally uh, reduction techniques or SVD or what have you, they use up degrees of freedom to actually remove the the batch effects, and <laughs> they would give you in, uh, they would give you uh, p values which are too good. Okay, um, I wasn't going to mention it, but there's there's a really fun. It, it, there's actually um, oh, I think I'll mention it and be bold. Where's the one that I'd actually hidden? Uh, Okay, I'll unhide this slide. So um, let me just share it. Um, so th this is actually an ideological. So with the SVD, there's two things you're kind of mentioning there. So one is just the computation of the a full rank decomposition. That takes up a lot of memory and you may not need to calculate the full rank. If you run something like Erpola, it will run an approximation and it doesn't calculate the full rank of the matrix. By the full rank means all of the principal components. It will just calculate a subset of the components and that actually makes it faster. And there's also other ways where you can just calculate the first component just using a, a linear regression or NEPALS if you've got missing data. Um, SVD doesn't actually generate any model. Um, it is just decomposing the variance of the data. 
and trying to find projections through the data that maximize the variance. Um, and so is PCA, and PCA can be considered as transformation of the matrix before you do it. Um, there's actually a school of thought. There's, there's a whole mass of um, Leo Bremen, B-R-E-I-M-A-N, in 2001, wrote this school of thought of, do you have to fit a model on the data before you actually do the, do the decomposition, or do you actually just do an algorithm on the data? And so there's two very, very, very contrasting statistical school of thought on how you actually do this. Um, so there's a lot of thought that you don't have to necessarily fit the model before you go. Which is, and it, it's an interesting review, um, article with like, um, it had tons and tons of responses to it by all the statistical leaders in the field. And I think, you know, it might be something that we need to consider um, it, it is what is the most appropriate approach.